So Bethesda has shed some more light on Starfield in a very brief overview video titled Starfield The Settled Systems. In this video they went over the game's setting and they touch on a few factions that we may run into along the way. I'll leave that trailer linked down below, I suggest you go and watch it before watching this, but I wanted to talk about everything we know up until this point as well as what they've covered in their recent update and maybe speculate on some takeaways that I have from it as well as see what you guys think of everything. I think Bethesda is actually doing a really nice job of peeling back the layers of this universe for us to speculate on because without establishing some lore or background background, this new IP might struggle to grab people right away like a new Fallout or Elder Scrolls game typically does. Let's just hope if the game does well, we aren't looking at 15 re-releases before Elder Scrolls 6. For comparison, I've played New World for around 30 hours in total, and I know more about Starfield's story and universe than I do New World. Amazon did an absolutely terrible job giving their new IP room to establish its lore, which for any new IP, especially on the RPG slash MMO RPG genre, is really important. Some of the first details that Bethesda revealed about Starfield touch on three distinct locations that we will visit during our time with the game. I want to touch on these real quick because they kind of go hand in hand with a lot of the information that we learned today. The first location, Neon, is a city with fish that will get you so high the entire economy of Neon now revolves around this new drug that is illegal everywhere else outside of Neon. This is relevant later, but Neon sounds like an absolutely awesome location. One specific city on one specific planet where everyone just meets up to do a bunch of wild drugs and whatever else else happens here. The second location, New Atlantis, is the capital city of the United Colonies, one of the main factions of Starfield who we'll touch on in a bit. New Atlantis is a metropolis described as a melting pot of people from all around. New Atlantis probably plays a similar role to the Imperial City in Oblivion, that's the closest comparison I can make for it. Now the last location we know about is Aquila, which is the capital city of the Free Star Collective, which from the artwork looks to be a bit more downtrodden and nomad than the capital city of the United Colonies. Aquila is a walled city to defend from threats outside the gates, described as a wolf slash raptor hybrid. Not sure which Vsauce experiment led to that happening, but sounds cool. Now that we have that covered, let's talk about today's video. In today's update, Bethesda gave us some more background on the setting of Starfield. Starfield takes place in the year 2330 in a small pocket of the Milky Way 50 light years outside of our current solar system named the Settled Systems. 20 years before Starfield takes place in the year 2310, the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective fought each other in what's being called the Colony War. Presently, the two factions are at peace, but it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They still don't really like each other. Bethesda didn't give any extra information on these two factions, but what we do know from before is that the United Colonies is the most powerful military slash political faction in the settled systems with their capital city being the main metropolis we'll be exploring. New Atlantis. We also know that the Free Star Collective is stationed at their main capital city of Aquila and that their main beliefs are that of personal freedom and individuality. That little tidbit on the Free Star Collective's core belief is very important because I think it gives us more background on what these two factions may have been fighting over previously. The United Colonies are a politically and militarily powerful faction, housing people from all around the galaxy. It's safe to assume they likely impose some sort of laws or restrictions against people and bam! You got a civil war and oh my god, they're just selling us the Skyrim civil war in space, aren't they? Todd, you've done it again, you beautiful bastard. Joking aside, I think it's fairly clear given what we have where these two groups stand and a rough idea of why they don't like each other. If I use Star Wars as an example because it's the most common media that people apply to space movies and space games, the United Colonies kind of seem like a united republic that's possibly leaning towards some empire tendencies, while the Free Star Collective seems like it could be compared to the Rebels or maybe that one scene in The Last Jedi where there's like 12 people left on the Millennium Falcon and everyone else is dead. It's hard to say, and I'm absolutely speculating a ton here, but I have a feeling that I'm not too far off. Hopefully there's a lot of gray area between the two factions, because I think a lot of choice throughout the game will likely revolve around these two main groups. I think it would be disappointing if all of our choices in game were essentially a choice between stable status quo or individual freedom. Give me that moral ambiguity. Come on, Bethesda, I know you can do it. However, they also touched on several other smaller factions while giving no information on them, but don't worry. I'm here to speculate and drive the hype train because I'm an idiot who wants to set himself up for disappointment. Those groups are the Ecliptic Mercenaries, the Pirates of the Crimson Fleet, Violent Spacers, and the religious zealots of House Veru. Aside from names and one concept art image, Bethesda gave us nothing else, but I'm here to dive into the rabbit hole so you don't have to. In comparison to the others, the ecliptic mercenaries look well funded. Like if Jeff Bezos goes into space again but he wants to hire armed guards, these are the guys that he's bringing with. Also, if you want to learn some new space vocabulary, ecliptic refers to a plane in which a planet, well, planet commonly referring to Earth because, you know, it's like the only planet that we know. But the ecliptic is the plane in which Earth revolves around the sun, or if we apply it to Starfield, whatever body planets in this game revolve around. I would assume it's a sun, though, I 
think. I'm pretty sure Starfield is grounded in reality a bit. Regardless, I think by definition, these guys are mercenaries that are prone to either hijacking, robbing, or defending spacecraft shortly after leaving a planet or intercepting people as they arrive. I might not be the smartest YouTuber, but this is my theory on these guys. They do look really well equipped, so I wouldn't be surprised if they were supported and or funded by the United Colonies because that's the most powerful faction we know of. Now, the Pirates of the Crimson Fleet are much harder to extrapolate what they might be uh, because I didn't really have to Google what a pirate was, and we can assume that they hang out on or near red ships. In their artwork, though, they do look a bit light on equipment, so maybe these are the guys that can just be the generic, oh, hey, you're out traveling? Well, time to die cannon fodder that we've gotten used to in Bethesda games. Now, I don't think that violent spacers refers to a faction. I actually think this refers to a collection of named NPCs, rivals, or quest NPCs and whatnot that we might run into. Like, look at this guy and tell me he isn't a Xander Scrygorn or something like that, right? Like a bounty hunter or maybe a significant member of the pirates or of the mercenaries. I think that this was just an excuse for them to stay on script in this video without showing an image of the religious zealots of House Veru because they didn't even show an image of these guys, they just dropped their name. And there's no doubt in my mind that these guys are important. We didn't get a picture, we didn't get any information other than crazy space pastors, which to me is them hiding something. And if they're hiding something, it's because they don't want us to see it yet. And if they don't want us to see it yet, they definitely think it's too important to show off just now. Maybe I'm wrong here, maybe I'm off base, and maybe I'm just going crazy and should put on the tinfoil hat, but what do you guys think? The last faction that they covered today is the player faction, Constellation. All we know is that Constellation is a group of adventurers dedicated to uncovering the mysteries of the galaxy. Hopefully their first mission is uncovering that stupidly vague slogan. We don't know anything about them, at all. No backstory, no affiliation, you can't really pull anything from their slogan and it's really bothering me. I need to speak to the branding manager of Constellation because if this enterprise wants to succeed, we need a better mission statement. My theory is that Constellation was formed after the war between the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective. If it was formed prior to the war, they probably would have had to pick sides and having prior allegiances to this game starting up, I just don't see it happening. I do think it could be interesting though if people within Constellation have their own personal allegiances to the different main factions though. It could lead to some fun rivalries and banter. So what do you think? How do you think that the world and universe that Bethesda is putting together for Starfield is shaping up? Like I said earlier, I really like how they're slowly unraveling bits and pieces of Starfield because it lets us slowly understand some of these things before the game releases. Although I mainly enjoy it because it gave me this idea for this exact video, which if you enjoyed, you should absolutely leave a like on. It's not my normal content. I'm usually playing Elder Scrolls or Fallout, you know, just Bethesda games in really stupid ways, but I do absolutely plan on doing the same when Starfield comes out and I'm certainly excited to make content for it. So I figured, why not start now? Let me know what you guys think of everything we have on Starfield so far, and definitely let me know if I missed anything, because I don't claim to be perfect. If you want to stick around and support the channel, I've got two videos right here that you can click before this video ends. Wow, isn't that cool?